Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to take an um, uneven, bumpy surface like this and turn it into a completely flat, smooth, really nice surface like this using nothing but a simple hand router. So this is a really good thing if you're just doing a one-off surface that you've got to smooth out really quickly and basically otherwise you could just use a surface planer and if you don't have one of them then this is a much cheaper alternative because surface planer and thickness planers are very expensive and something like this will probably be much too large to fit through it. Not only does this work on a large scale, but it also works on a small scale. I took a really f bumpy, uneven piece of recycled HDP from bottle lids that is, as you can see, not very flat either on the top or the bottom. And using this method in only a couple of minutes, completely smoothed it out into a flat sheet blank like this on both sides, and it looks much nicer. So these two slabs of wood, I believe, are oak wood, and my parents brought them back from when they were on a walk in the wood and someone was chopping down a tree, and they've asked me to make it them into a tabletop, and it only took a couple of hours to smooth this out completely just using the router. It was then really, really quick to then just sand it up and oil it, and so far it's looking pretty good. So let's get started. So recently I bought a Bosch hand router and that's what I'm going to be using for this project and I've also got a mount so that I can turn it into a table router. And I've also made a homemade fence for it so that I can adjust the different angles on it. So first I'm going to practice on this piece of HDP which is recycled from bottle lids and the link will be in the description down below to how I made this because I've got a tutorial video. So to start out I had to make a jig and this jig is just using a piece of veneer wood and I basically had to cut a slot for the router bit to run, run along. And I would recommend using some normal plywood or MDF for this since the veneer wood had loads of different bits of wood inside and it sort of bent the jigsaw blade and meant that I couldn't cut a straight line which means it looks rubbish. What the jig looks like afterwards is basically just a flat piece of wood with a groove in it wide enough for the router bit. So I've installed a guide ring in my router which came with it and I'm just going to put that into the groove and that will stop it from straying and cutting into the wood jig. It sits on two pieces of wood which are tall enough to clear the HDPE so that it can then slide over and those two pieces of wood are exactly the same thickness on either side. I need to secure it down just using double sided duct tape that's just wrapped over and also some thin wooden shims that I made. It's not going to rock and it's also not going to move while I'm cutting it. So now it's ready to use, all I've got to do is then push my router as far down so that it touches the material and then what I want to do is I want to lower it by another couple of millimetres to get rid of all of the air bubbles which are there. So I then practiced and experimented with a couple of different methods of just going along and I found that instead of just moving in a random motion, if you move from right to left and then go back to the start and go right to the left and then you can slowly remove it all in one pass and it's a much better system than just going in random directions. So let's peel it off and see what it looks like underneath. So this is the surface and it's actually really smooth and flat. I had one small slip in the corner where the guide just slipped off the edge piece of wood and it cut deeper than I wanted to, but I could easily just take that out with another pass if I could be bothered. I like the HDP shavings because I can remelt them down into other projects. I also flipped it over and did it on the other side and since the surface was already flat I didn't need to put in any shims. Now both sides are flat and smooth and that worked pretty well, now I can try it out on the log. But to do that I'm going to have to improve my jig a little bit more, so I'll show you that when it's done. So first I had to clean up and then I decided to take some scrap pieces of wood and improve the jig just a little bit more so that the router is a bit more secure inside. I've done is I've screwed on two pieces of wood on either side of my wooden guide and I've made sure that it's wide enough and tall enough to be able to slide completely over the log which I'm going to be planing flat. So I'm then going to remove this silly guide thing which I was using earlier because that works for smaller things but it restricts the size of the bit which I can use so I'm going to take that out and put in a much larger bit and then I'm going to have to make some wooden guides to stop it from going off track. I'm going to put two wooden rails on either side, like this, that is then going to hold this in place and it's going to go backwards and forwards. So this guide is just made by screwing on two pieces of wood either side of the router and I've made sure that they're the right size and distance away so that when the router is moved backwards and forwards the bit is kept inside the channel. It doesn't need to be secured down because it's so heavy and it's pretty flat so it's not going to rock backwards and forwards. So the aim on this is going to be to take off as little as possible on each pass and I'm going to do more than one pass. So I'm going to sort of go where the high spots are at the moment and then 
go lower and lower until the entire thing is flat. Again, I found that the best method to do this was to exactly try and take off as little as possible per pass and per each time you're sliding across. So go all the way out to the right, pull it back about half the route a bit into the wood and then slide it all the way across, turn it off and come all the way back to the other side and then carry on doing that until you've flattened out the entire surface. So this is what the log looks like after the first pass. As you can see it didn't really touch much of the lower stuff in the middle here, but it completely got rid of some of the higher stuff up here and it's left a really nice surface. Although you can sort of see bumps, it's kind of like the effect that you get when you mow a lawn and it's actually at the exact same height and you can see it's completely flat. Now I'm going to do another pass but a couple of millimetres lower down. So it was going really well, this surface is really smooth until I got to this section here and the bit went a little bit crazy and I was going a little bit too fast and I actually managed to shear off both of the tips of the bit here and my only other option of choice was this much smaller one which would have brought it's half the size, it's half inch one and it would have probably taken double the time so I went and bought a new longer bit and these are actually quite expensive and I had to wait for it to arrive from Amazon but luckily the delivery was quite quick and I can carry on and I want, I'm going to go a lot more slowly and because this is sort of the end of the grain this is much tougher on the bits than I realised so I'm going to go much more slowly and I don't want to break this because it was £5. So this is what the wood looks like after I've finished doing the cut and I think it looks really nice now. It's almost completely smooth and even though you can see some sort of lines in it, you can't actually feel them with your fingernail. So it means these aren't very deep and they'll easily be sanded out. It then only took a couple of minutes just using various different types of sanding tools to then completely smooth out the surface to 80 grit sandpaper and then I can oil it. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe. The video on how I make this table once it's finished and how I do the legs is going to be out sometime in the next couple of months once I get it finished. Also as you can see I've got two slabs of these big bits of oak and if you have any suggestions for what you think I should make with the second one, whether you think I should just do it again like this but do some improvements or even make something else, I was thinking just another table would be quite nice, then please also post them in the comment section down below. On top of that, if you've got any good ideas for what you think I could use my new router or router table for in any new project, then also post them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video, you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here. If you want to find out the full videos, then go to my channel and check them out.